One common annoyance of the Amazon Echo Dot is the inability to automatically switch between the internal Dot speaker and Bluetooth connected speakers. Today on The Hookup, we're going to check out a relatively simple way to solve this problem for under $10 using a microcontroller. To start out, let's take a quick look at the problem. My home stereo receiver switches between inputs, between the cable box, the Roku, the Chromecast, and the CD input, which actually has a Bluetooth receiver plugged into it that's connected to my Echo Dot. When I'm playing music through the Echo Dot, and the stereo is set to the CD input, all is well and I can hear anything Alexa says through my speakers. The problem comes when I'm on any other stereo input, and the Echo stays connected to the Bluetooth receiver. In this case, the Echo's responses get sent to the Bluetooth receiver, but they won't actually be played out of the speakers, which means no one gets to hear her wonderfully crafted responses. The ideal solution for this is for the Bluetooth to automatically connect and disconnect when the stereo is on different inputs, a function that is actually not built into the Amazon Echo. To accomplish this task, I use an Arduino Nano to intercept the infrared commands sent to the receiver and power the Bluetooth receiver on and off accordingly. In order to complete this project, you'll need an Arduino Nano, an infrared receiver, an NPN transistor, a Bluetooth receiver, and of course an Amazon Echo of some kind. Optionally, you can get some prototype boards and some screw terminals if you want to make this thing easier to connect and disconnect. The basic circuit looks like this. We'll use the one amp, five volt power supply from our Bluetooth receiver to power both the Arduino Nano and the Bluetooth receiver. In my case, I hooked up the positive wire from the adapter to the five volt pin on the Nano, and I did this because the power supply itself was regulated. But if you were using some other power supply with a voltage other than five volts, you'd need to hook it up to the V-in pin instead. We hook up the VCC pin on the IR receiver to the five volt and the ground to the ground, and then the output goes to D2 on the Arduino Nano. I've got the base pin on my NPN transistor connected to D3 on my Arduino Nano, the collector connected to the negative wire on the Bluetooth receiver, and the emitter connected to the ground. The basic idea of this circuit is that the base on the transistor controls whether or not current will be able to flow from the collector to the emitter. This means it will act as a switch for the negative wire on our Bluetooth receiver's power supply. Hooking up a transistor in this fashion is called a low side switch, and it's really useful. Whenever we receive specific commands on the IR receiver on pin 2, we'll write pin 3 high to allow current to flow through the transistor and turn the Bluetooth receiver on, or low to block the current flow and turn the Bluetooth receiver off. After you've got all this soldered up, you should have something that looks like this, and you're ready for programming. We're going to utilize a library in Arduino to read our IR commands. I'll put the link to that library down in the description. To load the library, go to Sketch, Include Library, Add Zip Library, and point it to the file you downloaded from the description. Next, load up the Arduino sketch that I've linked below and flash it to your Arduino Nano. Once we've got the sketch loaded, we can start figuring out which commands are being sent to the receiver. Open up your serial monitor and point your remote control at the IR receiver. Press each button for your receiver input control and take note of the IR code that's received. It's a good idea to check each button multiple times to make sure that the code that's sent is the same every time and that you're not getting any interference. Copy the IR codes to the sketch replacing the ones from my example. It's not crucial that you update the serial print parts, but I'd recommend doing it because it'll make your life a whole lot easier if you need to come back and change your code to update your components in your home theater. Once you've got your codes in, you just need to decide which ones should turn your Bluetooth on and which ones should turn it off. In my case, I wanted the Bluetooth to turn off for every instance except for the CD input. That's because that's the input for my Bluetooth receiver. If you want to turn the Bluetooth receiver on, you'll use digital write high. If you want to turn it off, you'll use digital write low. If you've hooked it up as I've shown, it should now work exactly the way you want it to. But I had one final hack for my purposes. I use a Logitech Harmony Hub to control my home theater, and I wanted the Echo to play through my stereo speakers when all the devices were powered off. To do this, I set a custom power off routine for my receiver, 
and told it to change the input to the CD input whenever the off command was issued. This means the Alexa will always answer me through my stereo speakers unless the TV is on, in which case she'll use the built-in speaker on the Echo Dot. This was my personal solution to this problem, but I can't guarantee it's the best one. If you solved this problem a different way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.